They say that fights aren't won in the ring, they're won in the gym. The gym is where you develop. It is where you build character, integrity, confidence. This particular gym helped keep troubled kids off the street. It was a place where they belonged. Now, it's gone. We're always looking for a way to give back to our community. So a group of us got together to fight each other to raise money for a new gym. But we're not boxers. We're cooking your food, serving your drink, cutting your hair, making your coffee. At first, the coaches didn't think much of us. They thought we were soft, that we couldn't handle the training. It's been tough. We've been pushed to our breaking point. A few of us have quit, some have fallen to injury, but there are those determined to make it to the end. Follow our journey both inside and outside the ring as we make the long trek down the road to the restaurant rumble. My name is Nick Lavery Breyer. I'm here at Pizzeria Farina, and I'm going to be a ring announcer. When we first opened Farina, like, I wanted something very specific and only do one thing and do it well, which is pizza. And we only 110 every day. We open at 5 and we close when we run out. It's always fresh. Yeah, there's some guys who I mix them up and I don't know who's who, but I got a vested interest in, uh, in uh, Nathan the Big Bird Hooten. Oh, I see that? That's new. You know, he's a soft-spoken guy. He's maybe not the most physical character. So I had a bike accident last summer. Uh, I landed on my face. Um, I don't have any memory of it. I had a couple of CT scans and they showed that my sinuses were shattered. I don't know. So I have to have an MRI done because I might be possibly brain damaged. <laughs> and my MRI is scheduled for the 23rd of July, which is two days before the fight. If I want to get like my friends and my family and my customers and my coworkers to give me money for this, I feel like I have to explain to them what it is like, like what I'm actually doing. And it just seemed like a really easy way to do that. Best, best case scenario, I walk away with a win, a belt, an amateur boxing record, and pride myself for having done something and succeeded in something that I never, ever, ever would have considered myself ever, ever, ever doing. Actually, I'll have that last one regardless. I already have that one. That's weird reading my own words out loud. Nathan just seemed one of the least likely to see it through. I want to see if I can do something that's so out of my character and, and actually succeed at it. Amazingly, he's one of the people that have taken it the most seriously. It'll change my life. Like, it's all training and, and, and all this stuff I've never done before. And he set an example to, uh, of commitment and <laughs> improvement. Push! Push! It's been really cool to watch, you know? You don't go this far just to like have this piddle out ending. Like I've been terrified about this thing since day one. I'm, I'm the entire time I've envisioned myself winning a belt in the ring. So I might as well stick with that. That vision. <laughs> Kenzie's like an over underdog. They would say Craig Kenzie is fundamentally backwards. It's good. It's made me a lot better fighter. The fact that they uh, sometimes like singling me out, I think. That's it, Fernando. You're doing well. I've only heard, I've only heard about Craig Kenzie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's really the only person I've heard a lot about. Uh, I want to give that uh, punch coach Dave in the face really hard. Uh, he tried out after me, the guy in the ring. Yeah, I think uh, I think he was giving him a couple more hits. Well, walk the walk today, but then now you got to enter Uncle Davey's realm. We're going to do the full four, four rounds documented. I want all the cameras there because I'm going to take you deep and I'm going to drown you. Oh, uh, yeah? I'm not worried about that. Oh, he's so cocky, but you did good. You did better than I thought. I've known Kenzie for a little bit longer before this thing, and he is just like, whew, fucking drive you crazy, man. I told him, I said, if you want to do this, you have to stop learning how to box from watching YouTube videos, because that shit doesn't help you, right? He does the stupidest things, right? He just like, he come in and he's, oh, he got his funny style, right? Funny style, big beard, bald head, funny gym clothes, and he, he gets on the bag like this and wants to pop his jab like, you know, pop his jab like this. And I said, fuck, what? Is, like, I'd always tell him not to do it, right? No, if people always come and they want to do what they saw so and so on HBO do. So I said, you can't do that. He's smacking the bag. I said, what do you stop doing that? Hold your hands up like this. And he's like, well, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm working on a jab. He's a fucking expert. I'm working on a jab like Sergio Martinez. I said, does Sergio Martinez have a shitty jab? I don't know. I always assumed I was going to be pretty good at fighting. Not quite superhero level, but you know, pretty close. I kind of wanted to punch some guys in the neighborhood. I think if I if I ever really wanted to stop him, stop him, I'd have to kind of put him down on the canvas. I think there's a definite possibility that uh, someone could uh, someone could get knocked out. I got my confirmation that uh, I'm going to be, was accepted six years after the first time I applied. Today is July 6th. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning for Barcelona, Spain uh, for my orientation with Doctors Without Borders. Unfortunately, I won't be back until the 22nd or 23rd, uh, which is a couple days before the July 25th fight night. And as of right now, we still don't know whether or not Comsport will allow me to go ahead and actually fight on uh, f the final fight night. If it means I lace up my gloves on the taxi back from the airport on the way to the fight, I'm, I'm good to go. There's, it's been, I think, well documented that uh, there's been a little bit of trash talking and I've set the tone from the beginning that I'll, I'll take on anyone. And uh, I think to uh, just to use, lose a couple weeks worth of training isn't nearly enough good an excuse to drop out of the fight. So I've uh, told the coaches that I'm ready to fight. Uh, it's up to their decision whether they think it's going to be a safe or a, um, a proper fight. Uh, I've been going a few nights now just so I get some sparring in, which is absolutely terrifying. I love the sparring. If you don't do well enough, you can get punched in the face, and that's, um, that's good motivation. My first sparring session, I got a pretty big black eye. She's got a really crazy uh, hook, her right hook, and she came around and got me right on the side of the head. And my, uh, you know, I was seeing stars. And, and he hits me directly in the face with a left cross and like my neck snapped back, back against the ropes. It was just, uh, it was quite spectacular actually. And I mean, it's nice when you make these good connections or you drop someone and it's like a feeling of accomplishment. You're like, yeah, I'm like getting better and it's nice seeing that progress. When you're sparring and that person's coming at you and you have to hit them. I was matched up with uh, Elliot. I've never seen him spar, I've never trained with him since we did the matchup, so I haven't really seen him, so I hope, I hope he's ready. At this point right now, I don't know if I'm fighting, you know, it's up to the organization, Apron for Gloves. Coach Dave's got a heavy job on him. My name is Elliot Hashimoto, I'm the co-owner and executive chef of Court and Finn Restaurant. My partner Francis and I put our hearts into this restaurant. He grew up boxing, I took it up on a charity event. I've written this menu and I think it's a great little example of what you can do and showcase good seafood just done simply. So what I got here is Lindsay, one of my waitresses at Cork and Finn. She's going to be one of the ring girls for the big restaurant Rumble. I gotta talk to Big Bird. Jason! The tank is clear and it's time to get your sparring. You understand? I put a lot of thought into it. And I know you've worked very hard. And uh, I, I want you to continue the training. But I can't do that with a good conscience because I can't throw you in there you know, prepared. You know, it's gotta be safety first. I can't, I couldn't do it with a good conscience. What do you think? It's disappointing. Oh, 
Oh, I understand that, but do you, do you understand that, yeah. that where I'm I, coming I, from? I feel like uh, the doctor's being overcautious. Maybe not, but I feel like he is. We don't know, you know, and, and is it worth that? Do you want to, you know, do you want to be a, the, the guy that's in a wheelchair as a vegetable because no. of a charity boxing match? You know what I mean? I just, it's too much to risk, you know? But you've done some good shit, man. This is a big fucking stride for you, right? You know? Jim Axe is gonna be upset because I think he's looking forward to smacking you. Well, likewise. <laughs> In the same way that I saw myself winning a belt, they both just seemed like, yeah, this might happen, but probably not. But then that one did happen. <laughs>